Welcome to the final world show, everybody. We've made it to another great Tuesday here on the Bama Standard. As always, hit that like, subscribe button. This is the final whistle. I'm McIndell. I'm going to go around the table, introduce everybody. Dan James, how are you today? All good, brother. Waiting for another high action pack info field show. Roll tide, everybody. Roll tide, roll. roll. Tide. Chris James, who's my partner in crime, we will be selling ribs and chicken plates at 8 a on um, Saturday. And some gizzards, too. <laughs> some gizzards in the cr- <laughs> cooked in the pre- cooked in the pressure cooker. Pressure cooker. <laughs> the nastiest thing I ever did in my life. I don't know why. <laughs> you were hungry, man. That's how it is. You doing all right today, Chris? Came out looking like boiled peanuts. <laughs> oh, I thought you could say something else. Okay. Um, let's go to the next guy. Lou Sean, our resident Debo. I mean Lunos. Is the, which one is it tonight? You know, I, I, I'm going as Lunos because I, I'm getting ready to go out of town. I, I might have to be on a security detail for Petty this weekend. <laughs> you never know what might happen. A-day weekend. I'm excited, though. It's going to be my first one in a very long time. I'm going to be with two guys, possibly three, maybe four. You know, it's going to be awesome, guys. I can't wait. Let's go. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. And, ladies and gentlemen, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy who would need so much security in Tuscaloosa, our presidential candidates. I'm talking about Daniel Petty, Auburn's number one hater. How are you today, sir? Man, I'm, I'm magical. I'm here with my favorite people. Wearing my man, I got a Lang shirt on. It just don't have the L and the N and the K. Listen, um, this, on our panel, we got six people. They said this is about how many people was at Auburn's uh, 8 game. game. There's Ooh. there's more people in the band than there were in the stands. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, we got a special guest joining us today, Mr. JB himself, JB Sports Talk Show. He is doing a lot of big things. Uh, follow him on Twitter. He does a lot of great stuff. I follow him. He's just a, another voice to have here on the Final Wilson, and we're glad to have him. JB, how are you doing today? I'm good, my man. Appreciate y'all for having, having me on the show. And uh, like you said, sports talking with JB, that's my thing. I'm a huge Alabama fan. I follow the Bama standard and everything you guys are doing. So it's an honor to be on the panel tonight. Well, we're glad to have you on. And speaking of honor, if you want to honor your business, look out for Workspace Solution, WorkspacePros.com. If you want to honor your business marketing needs, please reach out to Workspace Solution at WorkspacePros.com. They do an amazing job helping businesses go from the next level to an even higher level. So they should have used, Auburn should have used them to kind of market their 8A game. But that's neither here nor there. Um, hey. And ladies and gentlemen, our, what are you going to say, Chris? Oh, JB, his show. The, oh, yeah, yeah. So we got a show, new show coming, Saturday Night Talking Bama. It will be on the Bama Stand Up YouTube channel. It's coming soon. I know we got eight day this weekend. So next weekend, next Saturday, me and my partner, JT, we bring all the noise on Saturday night, man. Talking Let's Bama. Let's get it. And, uh, boy. Y'all, we're going to have something for y'all on the first show. So make sure y'all tune in on Saturday nights, 8.30 p.m. Yeah. Saturday nights, 8.30 p.m. Listen, that's just another segue to let you know that the Bama Standard is your number one source for Bama content. You got the final whistle. You got the Bama Standard. You got so many shows. We just, you know, handing them to you left, right. Now we got a Saturday mm-hmm. show. So um, I mentioned Workspace Pros, Workspace, workspace Solutions. But I want to give a shout out to our other sponsor, <laughs> Title Towel at wetwillsports.com. Please get a title towel from Wet Will Sports. As you can see, you can roll tight in Brian Denny. Bring it on Saturday in 8 a. Let's pack out the stadium in Brian Denny for Kaylin DeBoer's first scrimmage. Um, let's make it special. So if you want a title towel, go to wetwillsports.com. That's wetwillsports.com. Use the promo code STANDARD. That is S-T-A-N-D-A-R-D. 
and uh, <laughs> use the promo code STANDERN. <laughs> so, guys, listen, we just mentioned Alabama's Coach KDB's. And when I mention KDB, I'm talking about Coach DeBoer having his first A day in Tuscaloosa. First of all, we want to give a shout out to the fans. We want as many, we want to at least get 100K in Brian Denny in Tuscaloosa. I know all of us are going to be there getting Friday, Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. But let's welcome, let's embrace the new wave of Alabama football under Coach Kalen DeBoer. And let's just show them that we, we don't give a piss about none but the tide down here in Tuscaloosa. But guys, what are you... Um, <clears throat> Let's preview the 8 day game. What are your, some of your, you know, um, your thoughts, your predictions? Chris, you got your finger up first. I'll let you go. Hold on. I got, I got a very important announcement. <clears throat> first, before we go, we have hit 10,000 subscribers. We had for this Bounce Town of Network. Hey. So, Team. hold on. Let me make the confetti come. What I got to do? What's that, what's that yeah. sign? You said make yeah. 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 it. Is. 10,000 subscribers. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Yeah. Let's Thank go. you to all the Thank fans. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you all. Take, you do. Take the horn, Dan. Um, <laughs> bum, 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 bum. So, guys, <laughs> let's get back to the A-Day. Um, listen, what are you most excited about? Preview, predictions. I'm a Chris. You had your finger up first. I go Chris, Dan, Loosh, Petty, and then JB to round us out. You know, what are you kind of previewing? What are your predictions? You know, what are your thoughts regarding um, this new staff's um, um, A-Day game? Well, first off, I'm interested in seeing the new offense and defense. I want, I want, I know it's pretty, it's going to be pretty vanilla. We're not going to show too much, but I want to see how, how our guys, how much faster our guys are playing without having to think, like especially on the defense side of the ball. But man, I am looking forward to those receivers against those DBs, those young DBs, and see how they hold up, you know, in their first real live, you know, action on A-Day. Uh, man, I, I sent the list out today. Y'all remember those, that, that, that list of linebackers that uh, that I sent out in the chat today? Man, when you think about Lawson, Campbell, um, uh, Russo, Alexander, oh, my God, man. It's like it, it's going to be some pass smacking, man. And I, I am I am excited about that. I want to see Justice Haynes. Um, I, I don't think we'll see. I, I'm guessing we're not gonna see too much of Jam Miller because you know we already know what he can do. So I, I expect to see more more Justice Haynes and uh, Richard and Richard Young, um, and Daniel Hill. Though this this is the young guy's time to shine. This this kind of like matter tell you in, in our in our um from our experience how they used to do it spring. Kind of sets up for the young guys that heading to camp will be the guys that they kind of start with. So you can make your mark in the spring and make a push. So just because you may not, you know, be on the first team O or the first team D uh, this spring, that doesn't mean that by August you won't be there. This is just kind of like giving a giving a um, a, a, a fall depth chart, Matt, as you would say, pretty much like a like a fall depth chart. So um, in predictions. I think that in a game like this, it's, it's usually a, a young guy that steps up and, and wins MVP. But I'm going with familiarity. I'm going with Kobe Prentice. I heard he's been tearing it up. And I think that connection between him and Mil he and Milro, I think that he's going to have a big day. I've been hearing nothing but good things about him. And and, and I you know we're going to throw the ball. So I, I'm, I'm going down with Kobe Prentice as my A-Day MVP. So you add an MVP conversation to it. Dan, <clears throat> predictions, yes. preview, T-Town, 8A, Saturday. Yes, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, I'm, I'm one of the few that will not be there, but, uh, you know, circumstances. But, we know uh, you got to perform at the old great <laughs> ladies. Uh, do what you got to do, home. you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 those old ladies don't dance for themselves. Hey, got to make that money somehow, man. You gotta Them perform, great bro. legs. You got to do it. You you do, anyway, you sponsored by Juke and uh, Do It with Saber, right? 
this weekend. English leather. English leather. English leather. <laughs> listen. Curve. Listen, but, uh, yeah. What, what, I, what I'm going to be looking for, you know, is the, the pace, you know, the pace of play, the, the intensity is what I want to see. You know, I want to see, I'm, I'm gonna, I want to see, you know, the new energy. So, uh, you know, but definitely, I, I, I want to see, you know, some of the new guys. I, I want to see Red Morgan. I'm looking forward to it. You know, that, that's that's a guy I've been hearing good things about. You know, I'll be, it'll be our first time actually be able to lay eyes on him in live uh, action. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm ready to see this this new, you know, four two five, you know, swarm defense. I, 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 I want to see the intensity from it. You know. Um, I'm I'm ready to see you know who the, who the new star is going to be. I, I've been hearing also yeah yeah Kobe Prentice has been doing his thing. You know he he could well be in the conversation of um, wide receiver one. You know so I, I'm looking forward to see those things. But definitely you know the intensity, you know and it, it's it's a it, it's it kind of signifies a new era in, you know in Alabama football. So you know it's exciting times. It's excited in the words of Boosie. Lushan. <laughs> you know, I expect to see players having fun. I expect to see players getting down. Pause. I expect to see players being more aggressive than normal because they're trying to show something. This is a whole new regime of as everybody's already alluded to, this this is a system that nobody's seen before. They haven't been able to perform. This this is all new. And when something's brand new, you want to show out. You want to do your best. You want to show something that you maybe have been keeping in the back seat. You know, j- just for today, which I'm talking about Saturday, which is a day, ladies and gentlemen. And I think what I'm most looking forward to is the trenches. I'm looking forward to seeing the elephants go against this nasty, mean, <laughs> savage defensive line that I've been hearing all these great things about. Mm. And I can't wait for it. And I'm going to see it because I'm going to be in the flight in less than 48 hours down to the title town. And it's going to be it's going to be interesting because I think there's going to be sparks. I mean, you, you you got strength on strength. And on the offensive line, you, you got some new cats on there. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, – Elijah Pritchett in person. I'm looking forward to seeing this new center, Brock. You know, I hear he's a tough guy. I'm looking forward to see what he's got against Tim Keenan. <laughs> it's going to be a battle, guys, you know. Um, but I think uh, I think I'm going to go more for the wolf as far as who I'm most looking forward to, that pass rush, that mm-hmm. nasty hunt you down, put you to the ground in the backfield pass rush. Speaking of rushing the MVP. Huh? I, I didn't hear Lou or Dan's MVPs. Oh. Well, you know what? Since it's a swarm defense, I don't think there's going to be MVP as far as the defensive side. I think the whole defense is going to swarm. And they're the first mm-hmm. thing I think they're going to do, they're going to take that ball away. Mm-hmm. I'm calling it right now. They're going to take it away at least three times. No, mm. oh. well, you know that that'll be something different because you know the first two scrimmages, you know, we the the offense has not has yet to turn the ball over, so that'll be something interesting to see. But uh, you know, as far as M- MVP, it it may as well come from the defensive side, and I'm looking at one of the newcomers, Red Morgan, Keon Saab, you know, maybe some one of those two. I like it, um, Patty. But Dan, it, it didn't um, <clears throat> didn't Coach DeBoer allude to in this last scrimmage that the defense seemed to start kind of catching up with the offense. And the mm-hmm. first scrimmage, you know, the offense, all the quarterbacks were hitting yeah. everybody, and exactly. they all just looked great. But in this last scrimmage, each of the quarterbacks kind of had moments where you know the, right. the defense is starting to catch up. So that's kind of what I'm interested in. You know, the defense has had time now. You know, it always starts out that way, and it, it sounds like the defense is starting to play a little bit. Womax, you know. Start play, seeing the same offense, and, and again, what Chris even alluded to, it's going to be so vanilla. So, you know, you start seeing the same things over and over, it gives the defense the advantage. So I'll be really interested, and, you know, with that advantage, what what quarterback can lead an offense, knowing they've got to make the, the right the right reads and the right plays and the right, you know, the right passes. 
And it sounds like all of them have had their moments, but it also sounds like, you know, Jalen is really, really making strides this spring. So, man, look, we can talk about all the positions and try to make it a battle, but the mo look, it, it all boils down to quarterback. So, absolutely, I'm most excited to see what the quarterbacks look like. Is Milrow taking that step in his progressions like we've all heard at the mid-range passing? Are these other guys, Simpson, Lonergan, uh, Mack, are, there, are they really – is there really a competition? There is the competition for – for second string, and I think we'll we'll know that. I don't think we're going to see much depth charts. I think that's probably going to be a thing of the past coming out of the spring with all this stupid ass transfer portal stuff. Coaches are going to be too scared to put out a depth chart, knowing some kid and his mama. Well, I'm second string, and I was promised to be a starter. I'm hopping in the portal. So I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of depth charts that have made out of sand outside of what we see with our eyes. But I think our eyes are going to tell us, and that's what I'm most excited about. What what quarterbacks? can step up knowing that de the defense is kind of, according to Coach DeBoer, caught up a little bit in practice. Hey. MVP, Patty. Your MVP. Favorite. Huh? Your favorite play is going to be your MVP? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Y'all, yeah. Too uh, close to 80 now. <laughs> Brock and Meyer. Brock and Meyer's offense because um, uh, – all the snaps are gonna be mad. I don't know. <laughs> He's so crazy. Hey, he might hey, be Brock on Meyer. You might be on to some. I like that. I like that, 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 that energy. Most political answer ever to back hey, out. You might be on to some. I don't know, but the, I don't know, man. Probably I tell you this. He also talked about like he's loving what he's seeing out of these receivers and the quarterbacks giving them chances to go up and make plays. Hey, one of the guys we rave about on this show, our boy Caleb Oden, might have a field day hey. in the back of that end zone, going up, mm. climbing the ladder, and making some plays and. I think I think that's going to be the guy that we've talked about the most that the world falls in love with coming out of a day is Caleb Odom, Mike Evans Jr. That's my MVP. Mm -hmm. Caleb Odom, Caleb Odom, JB, give us your take, preview, predictions, MVP on Saturday in Caleb DeBoer's first a day. Well, I know you guys touched on the swarm defense. I want to see what it looks like. We got a young secondary. Um, I'm anxious to see Xavier Mixie. Xavier Mixie, I've been hearing a lot of good things about him. Uh, of course, Red Morgan, uh, Jaden and Bachway. I want to see where he where he's at. Uh, Keon saw. Also, all the young guys like Quay Russo, man. I've been hearing a lot of good things about Quay Russo. Jeremiah Alexander, who's been there waiting his turn. You know what I'm saying? I want to see him. I think if you want to say MVP on defense, I think Jeremiah Alexander probably get like the most tackles. Whoa. Maybe a few I like sacks. it. I like it. You like know that. what I'm saying? You know, oh. I, I think it'll be somebody that, you know, we know Lawson and, and Campbell and Malachi, we know they're going to do their jobs. You know, somebody going to have to step up. And on the offensive side, I want to see what the play calling looks like. Mm. With this new Nick Sheridan offense, and I want to see the receivers. How uh, Coach Shep has got these receivers. He only had them for what, a couple months now. I want to see what's new, and uh, another guy I didn't say nothing about Emmanuel Henderson. Mm. Emmanuel mm. Henderson. I think that's my MVP for offense. I think he scores maybe a couple times. I like it. I really like. Nice. It. Great take. You know, I kind of. Justin, you about to say something? Yeah, acknowledge me. Why don't you want well, get your ones up? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, congratulations to Cody Rhodes for finishing his story Sunday night. And if you missed the About spectacular time. match this past Sunday night where he finally defeated Roman Reigns, go back and watch that. All the old wrestling fans, my gosh, y'all were entertained. <laughs> JB can testify to that. A day. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. My prediction is a ton of excitement. Uh, the eyes come back to Alabama as it should. It's been kind of uh, passed over for some time. When Saban retired, uh, apparently that's when Alabama died. But we're gonna show that we're still alive. The young guys taking center stage. That's gonna be the story of the day. And we're gonna those young guys are gonna show the guys who departed. We didn't need you to begin with. Keanu Coop is the guy that I'm looking at. He's been trending upward all spring. He is primed to have a Will Anderson type of year. I'm not saying he's going to be that next Will Anderson, 
but he's finally with the coaches who are harnessing his talents and his abilities, and they're putting him in positions to where he can excel the most. He's put on some weight. He's getting bigger, faster, stronger. I'm excited to see what he's going to do. I'm excited to see Quay Russo, a guy that looks like he is WWE ready, picking up guys 350 pounds, just moving them aside so he can do his business. This is a young guy, moving grown, man. I'm excited to see what he's going to do. Those are my two MVPs on the defense. Offensively, uh, we're going to see uh, Kendrick Law take off. We're going. <laughs> I'm excited because they got some guys there who know how to use him. And we're going to be sitting there thinking, my gosh, these years were wasted under coaches that got their <laughs> coaching certificate out of, out of the uh, eBay catalog. <laughs> Yeah, so Kendrick Law explodes. Caleb Odom is going to wow some people. And, yeah, uh, I think uh, Austin Mack is going to be the young guy who shows out on A-Day. But he's not doesn't mean he's the starter, folks. So now everybody get excited. We tend to kind of overreact when we see A-Day. But he's going to show you this. Hey, I'm the future. But these, uh, these uh, older guys, they got it right now. Jalen Milrow being QB1, and he will be in New York come the end of the season but yeah that's my take mm. mm-hmm. yeah, i like that i'm just you know i'm really i know everybody gets caught up in the ones i just want to see the depth you know i love looking at the guys we have that are kind of rotating coming in i just want to see what type of depth we have i know LaShawn mentioned those big guys up front just want to see all the different type of depth versatility i want to see how it's going to look you know, having to call the plays from the sideline into the helmet, you know, I just want to see how that's going to, how the quarterbacks are going to navigate, navigate that. Um, and just seeing, you know, kind of like the coaches, seeing different coaches, how DeBoer is on the sideline, you know, how does he come out? You know, he probably won't come out in a suit like Saban, but, you know, it just be kind of chill demeanor. I'm quite sure you see a lot of intensity from Shepard and the players. So, um, I'm just really excited to see this new regime. Real quick uh, update on our guy, Jaden Roberts. He's okay, y'all. He's not lost for a season or any of that. Just ankle issue. He'll be all right come this fall, and he'll be that dominant force we all expect. And here's a surprise. This past Saturday, Wilkham Forby was inserted into the starting lineup, and the dude held his own. So I'm really excited to see what Wilkins going to do this Saturday. So keep an eye on him. Let's do it. Let's do it. Speaking of keeping the eye on Bama, those Wildcats in Lexington tried to sneak one over on us and try to sneak and get Nate Oates from Tuscaloosa. But Coach Oates said, nah, I'm standing on business. I'm riding with the tide after coming into the Final Four. Um, You know, we came up short against UConn in that semifinal game, but I just think this is a great opportunity to celebrate the Crimson Tide basketball season. Um, The first time ever in history we witnessed Alabama go to a Final Four. Nate Oates' name is no no longer Nate Oates. It's called Nate Goats. Um, You know, listen, Mark Sears, uh, Pringle, Wright, so, I mean, those – Grant Nelson, those guys came through on a historic run – this basketball season with so many people doubted us talking about we don't play defense, but you know, it's just cool to see the Crimson Tide represented in Phoenix, you know, for the final four. But um, guys, I want to start with Chris, you know, Chris and Dan, y'all are kind of Chris, Dan and Petty, y'all kind of our basketball um, gurus on this show. Um, I'm going to start with Petty on this one first and then go Dan, then Chris. Petty. Talking about Ty Hoops, man, Final Four. Just give us your emotions and, like, how proud, you know, that you are of the Crimson Tide. Very, man. I, I've said many times some of my most my most memorable moments going to Alabama were those Wednesday nights in Coleman Coliseum and, and watching Grizzard and Mo Williams and all those boys get it done. And, man, I felt like those teams had so much talent and we always just, always just came up short or something crazy happened in the tournament. So – it's cathartic, man. And look, I, I don't care what people talk about. You get to the final four, that's a big deal. And and now I kind of, you know, it's funny. Now I feel like I know what other teams feel like when they play Alabama. You know, UConn was a buzzsaw. So it's kind of like, man, I'm glad to get here. But shit, I, I thought we 
that would put up a hell of a fight, man. Uh, it, the score didn't didn't reflect how close that game was, and man, just how cl- I mean, this team's one. And again, that shows this team's one piece away. That that one big center for them, just you know, that dude's dominant. He is what he is. He he took over the game when it mattered, and that that's what championship teams do. But no, nah, man, it, it just. Hey, build a new arena for this guy. Go ahead, build the statue. He turned down Kentucky. Think about that, man. This guy just turned down the Alabama of of basketball and said, no, man, I'm good at Alabama. This is Alabama's chance, man. Kentucky's basketball coaching search is starting to kind of go off the rails a little bit. If it does, keep Nate Oates in Tuscaloosa. Keep that NL, build him a new stadium, and, man, this won't be the last Final Four that man gets to because that's the other thing, guys. This wasn't just a flash in the pan. We got lucky. This team, He did it with a team that wasn't as good as last year's team, and probably there, this won't be his best team. He's going to have better teams. So, man, keep this guy here, and this, this is the beginning of a lot of great things for Alabama basketball. But, no, it was absolutely cathartic to be in the damn Final Four, man. It's just, you know, growing up, as a kid, that's just always such a big deal, man. The final four, final, you know, sweet 16, the late eight, but you get to the final four. It's like, I don't know. It's like you made it. Even It's like you won the championship almost, but so now nah, I can ramble all day. Cause I, it was, it was awesome. Roll tide. Keep Roll tide. calling the goats. <laughs> Nate goats. Um, Dan James. Let's go ahead with JB. Let JB, then we'll go around. Oh, home JB. Go yeah. JB. Uh, yeah, man, I followed the team very closely this year, man. Went to about 10 ball games. Uh, did some live media casting with this PSF app. I was, you know, doing that with Alabama, following the team real closely. And this was like Nate Oak. This was one of the best coaching jobs you could ever do. To take this team, like you say, one of the worst defenses in the country, but one of the best offenses and made it all the way to the Final Four in a close game and almost got it done. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of those guys. And on top of that, none of our players are NBA lottery picks, first round picks. We got a bunch of guys who Nate just got the best out of. These are not five-star guys he's got. He got the best out of these guys. But he's got some five-star guys coming in next year. And I'm anxious to see what's next. You know, we made it all the way to the Final Four. Nobody expected this. I didn't even expect that we lost 11 games. And um, I'm just – I'm excited for the future now. I'm just excited. And it's only up from here, I believe. Going up on a Tuesday, Dan James. <laughs> yes, man. Can't You know, can't say how proud I am of these guys, man. I mean, the 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 – you know, the thing from how far they came, just like the same as with the football team, how how much they grew during the year. You know, uh, the run, they started gelling at the right time, you know, which was big. You know, we, we're missing, you know, everyone knows we're missing the key piece. That was the big man, you know, improving. You know, the final, you look at it, two teams in the final, you know, it was it's dominant big man. That's what we needed this year. You know, but – uh. You know, I I I I I'm definitely proud of this team, but you know, let, let's not let's not get happy with just being there. You know what I'm saying? We're we're not Auburn, we're Bama, we we're, we're a championship program. You know, so let's 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 break through, man. Let's you know, let's break through. Let's finish it next year. You know, let, let's let's go all in. Let's do it. You know, we got we got the coach coming back. We get some of the team coming back. Hey, let's 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 make some tough decision, roster decision. But let's let's make a serious run at a national championship. You know, we're, we're right there. So now's the time to strike. You know, we're right there on the cusp. You know, of, of immortality. You know, and uh, you know, you you look at UConn. There's a little gap. You know what I'm saying? But we got we we have the you know the everything we need to be able to close that gap. You know, so you know we have the championship pedigree. You know, we got an awesome coach. You know. No, you couldn't then have much more talent than us. It's just they had the experience and the system that's been in place for years. You know, they have that pedigree. So now we're starting to get that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, let, let, let's finish it, man. You know, uh, Mark Sears, you know, awesome year, awesome year. You know, Grant Nelson, he became big. Nick Pringle, big down the stretch. You know, Estrada had – he went out with a, with a blast, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> – 
you know, we 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 get a few of the younger guys, you know, get them in the weight room, man. You know, let's let's quit getting pushed around. Let's start doing the push. Let's start being the, the bullies. You know, but all in all, you know, hey, great season. Hats off to you, you know. But let, let's finish the deal next year. Well, yeah, let's finish the deal. Chris, I'm gonna pose this question a little bit different. It's kind of looking into the future. I think we discussed how proud of the team we are. Looking at what we could possibly return next year with some of the additions of um, Sherelle, Daria Reed, um, the Mallet from um, Houston, I believe. Um, so, yeah. What Houston I Mallet from Pepperdine. Yeah. And maybe some other guys from the portal. Um, what do you think, realistically, do you think we return out of the starters? Um you think Nelson comes back? You think Sears comes back? And what do you think that could catapult us to the season next year? That's okay. First off, um, I, you, I, what I want to say, I just want to give hats off to Coach Oates for this great season. And um, it, it just basically shows that with with veterans, it's it's easier in college to win with veterans. You get what I'm saying? Because those teams that are led by freshmen, they tend to, like last year, we had Brandon Miller leading us. He was a great player. But when it came down to crunch time, you know, um, UConn, veteran team, you know, they went in the portal and got got veterans. And they have five NBA guys. You know what I'm saying? So with us, we had five seniors with four of them that have the opportunity to come back. So that's why I think that uh, – what's up, Ty? Th that's why I think Ty, that – what's going on? <laughs> Sorry for being late, gentlemen. I had a Zoom meeting and, uh, well <laughs> – they couldn't hold me down, right? Auburn tried to plan it to where it all happened at the same time. Blaze came in, gave him the people's elbow, and here I am. Don't Ooh. lie. You, you were scoping out that FarmersOnly.com. <laughs> Guilty. Sheep, sheep lovers. He had hey. a background of a tractor. In his, uh, in I'm his trying back. to get real good price on hay right now, and I just thought that the best way to do that was to hit up some Auburn fans. Do what you, you know? got to do. Do what do you got to do. 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 They the are player, overpopulated in cow. I hate the game, not the player. I, I just well, don't don't go to their don't go to their spring game because you ain't gonna find no buddy there to do it. <laughs> hey, hey, pity. Yeah, it was tending all the cow. Posted up on his tractor. His profile picture posted up on his tractor like this. <laughs> All the only straw hanging out his uh, mouth. All, all this only. Dot com. <laughs> hey, but um, but yeah, man. But I, I think that um, it's too early to tell on Grant Nelson because I think he'll kill the NBA workout with his athleticism, with how athletic he is. I think that he will really um do some damage. You know what I'm saying? Um, in, in, in a combined setting because he's six eleven. They can play inside, outside. He's a unicorn. That many fans are boy. You could go to. I'm trying to say so. You better let my dad man. Go. Um, but um, having having those guys coming in next year, those McDonald's All Americans, because like, I don't understand how good of a real protector Cheryl is. Cheryl's a dog on the defensive end. He's six eleven, probably still growing, probably being seven foot. Like Betty Yako grew the extra inch when he got there. I think he'll probably end up as a seven footer, and he's a dog on the defensive end. But the difference between him. And Betty Yako, he can shoot the three also. So he's not just a guy that's limited to the post. He can step out and, and knock down that three. So he's he's a, he's still a, a, a stretch to um a, a threat to, you know, stretch the floor. Therefore, you can keep Grant Nelson at the, at the four if he chooses to return. And if you got a lineup where you have, if Sears come back, Sears at the one, six, five, six, six, Riley Griffin at the two, then you have a six, seven, six, eight, Darian Reed at the three, six, eleven, Grant at the four, and then um, if Cheryl comes, I'm also hearing things about Balo from Arizona. I heard that too. Seven foot of Arizona. They say it's two guys that that uh, we have so called locked in that's going to shock everybody, but it just hasn't been announced yet. That's what I what I've been heard in multiple multiple locations that we have two guys that are going to come in transfer. That um there are elsewhere that's gonna come in and the one of them is a rim protector. But but um I, I think that our problem this year, we weren't long enough, and that was a problem for us defensively. We 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 like Sears is barely he really, y'all, he's really 5'11, maybe six feet. But then you have right cell, right cell is what by six two, JB. Right cell is probably about six two, maybe. Estrada's really Estrada's about six three. He about six two, six three. 
And we weren't long, man. We just weren't long outside of Riley Griffin. We really didn't have that 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 uh, perimeter defender perimeter. that can pose problems like UConn did. UConn had those six, five, six, six guys. That Castle man, that freshman. Oh my God, he's unreal, man. He was unreal. He and um and Trisha Newton, man, they they were unreal. That that their on ball defense was on was unreal, and that's why we were so good with Herb Jones. We had that length on with Petty and Herb, um, those long guys. To get out there on the perimeter and lock guys down. And that's what you expect to see next year. I know that's going to be a major focus in this offseason. You're going to have a 6'8, uh, 6'7 Darian Reed coming in. You're going to have a 6'7 cutting him. And the things that the guy I heard about was Chris Parker, a 6'9 guy that they say is a future pro. So hopefully we can keep him out the portal. And man, like, man, I just, I just suspect, like, I, I really, like, honestly, man, I really think next year we got a chance to be a number one overall seed again like we were last year that type of season but this time i think we're gonna finish the deal like i, I truly believe if everything falls into place like how it's looking i think we'll be cutting down the nets next april i agree you you saw hurley even after the Bama game he was walking to the locker room he's like, he like them boys good I ain't gonna even watch he's like that's, that's a good, good team like he knows that he was going up against some shooters so um, we just want to say roll tight. We're proud of Bama. Um, listen, but we had a comment come up, and we know it's from those guys that um on the planes talking about Alabama. Auburn's gonna have more Auburn had more 8A fans than Alabama. Listen, I, I don't know how to how that's going to be possible. I looked at the pictures of Auburn's 8 day game, and you would have thought it was um, everybody was on spring break, Easter break, everything. Was, you would have thought, thought, thought there was a run on rubbing tugs at the massage parlor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, was Freeze even at the game? Hey, it was. Hey, you so stupid. Do we man. know? <laughs> hey, it was. Don't know. It was very foul. Hey, it looked like a Pop Warner game. Like they had a little Pop Warner championship <laughs> by Auburn Stadium. Frank Thomas there handing out dicks and drooping pills. <laughs> <laughs> See, this yeah. this is what I wanted to unpack right here. Chris Williams <laughs> saying Thorn to Coleman is something y'all are going to be hearing a lot this year. Listen, Ooh. Coleman is a bad dude. He is. Right? There, there's no mincing words about that. Dude is Thorne, uber Thorne. talented. Dude has got unbelievable ceiling. Coleman is a dude. We're going to keep it 100 over here. But in the spirit of keeping it 100, I pray to the most high you trot out Thorn. I pray to God himself that you trot out Thorn. If we're keeping it up, please, please trot out Thorn. Just that's all I'm going to say. Just please, please do me that kindness. I mean, the secondary looked like they found them guys. Um, oh, boy, they were biting on everything. Like, it was an all-you-can-eat like, buffet, and it was really <laughs> like some of my old arena league teammates. DJ Durkin strikes again, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but, guys, let's get let's shift back from those guys on that uh, planes down on FarmersIsland.com to Patty's favorite target, the quarterback battle heating up. And um, I really think it's a two-headed race. I think it's going to be two guys. Maybe kind of a you know first quarterback Miro and I think Ty Simpson is going to make a lot of noise, guys. I start with Ty. What are you hearing? I still think Miro's made tremendous improvement from last year. Now that he's got a quarterback coach, but me just hearing coming off the second scrimmage, Ty Simpson account for three TDs, two passing, one running. Um, it just makes you think there's maybe a lot more competition there, even though I think. Miro might get the nod for sure. Ty Hayes, your thoughts? Yeah, listen, I I heard that both quarterbacks played well. I think it's important to note that Milro had, uh, I, I believe it was two passes, they said um, were real bad drops, right, to the point where those guys were doing push-ups afterwards. And if I'm not mistaken, one of them would have been for a big gain. Someone was telling me they were like, hey, if, if that would have been caught, like we're looking at a touchdown, possibly. We'll see. But, guys, this is what I was echoing last week. Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson, Dylan Lonergan. I won't say Austin Mack, only because Austin Mack is coming with Kalen DeBoer. Therefore, he has had the quarterback developer 
There has not been a quarterback developer on Alabama's staff since A.J. Milwe and Steve Sarkeesian near the level of what Alabama has right now, and it's not coming from just one area. It's not coming from just Kalen DeBoer. You have Nick Sheridan, who played quarterback at Michigan, who has done great with the work with the quarterbacks. Of course, you have Kalen DeBoer. Lest we forget, Coach Shepard was a passing game coordinator as well at Washington. And then you have Brian Ellis, who at Western Kentucky had Bailey Zappi throwing for nearly 6,000 yards, 62 touchdowns. Like, there are quarterback developers on this staff, so all of the quarterbacks are going to be improving. Ty Simpson had a big day, no doubt about it. But, I mean, listen, I, I still think Milrow's the guy. He has the experience. He has an ability that nobody else on this team in the quarterback room can replicate, and that's the ability to create with his legs. But at the end of the day, it is awesome news to hear that all of the quarterbacks are making awesome strides that's awesome right that, that that's exactly what we want let's go to jb then chris then dan you're mute you're mute it's auburn mute. i'm telling okay. you don't I let those sure auburn you. fans boot your screen bro i don't know what's going on with them it's auburn <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I'm I'm pretty sure Miro is gonna uh, you know keep the number one job. But it's also good to have a solid backup, man, because you never know an uh, injury goes down. Just imagine if you know we get on a on a run and we go into the playoffs and quarterback goes down, God forbid, and we don't have a backup that's ready to go. And I really hope that Ty Simpson is that backup because he has all the experience. He's been there. He, and, you know, he's getting better. He really wasn't a bad quarterback in the first place. I just think Miro kind of, you know, is the most athletic guy, and he kind of just picked it up and ran with it. But I'm glad we have good competition, and I just hope none of the guys transfer. Yeah, I agree. I think we do have great competition. From the videos I've seen, a lot of the one reps are going to Miro and Simpson. It just seems like what I'm starting to see. Chris, then Dan. Let me tell you, man, if the development trend, like what we've seen translate to the game days on Saturdays, man, you can go ahead and mail the Heisman Trophy to Tuscaloosa right now. You ain't even got to have a ceremony. Mm. Because mm. I'm, I'm telling you, man, the, the guy is so doggone dynamic, man, with his legs, that if his arm is anywhere near, it's like it's improved from last year. Keep in mind, y'all, the guy came in what three starts under his belt, two starts under his belt before the season, mm-hmm. or was it? And that was under game? Bill O'Brien. So, <laughs> and that was under Bob, B-O-B yeah. right? So to have him like we watched him grow, y'all, throughout the season. At the beginning of the season, the Texas game, we were like, "Oh boy, this might be a long year," you know. And then the game after what game was that? Uh, oh, Ole Miss game after the South Florida, Ole Miss. Y'all remember Ole we Miss. were going into the Ole Miss game, fellas. We were like, boy, Word. we were kind of sweating, you know, going into the old Miss game. And then um, that's when Jalen Hill stepped up and, and the rest has been history. So those little things, man, that, that he can fix, that's, that, that great quarterback coaches fix, man, like the, the sky's the limit for this offense, man. Because I'm telling y'all, man, Justice Haynes is probably going to be the best back we've had since Najee. And I actually think he's going to be more explosive than Najee. Najee was like the best receiving back we we've had. He, he Najee could have been a, a receiver. You could line him up out wide, and he'll be eat dudes lunch. But as far as like explosive, explosive like home run, like I, I just think that this combination of Jam Miller and Justice Haynes, man, it's been every time. Uh, it, it's, it's been when was the last time? And Probably Daniel Hill. And, and Daniel. Oh my God! But as far as like this type of speed and explosion, it, it probably had to be. It may have been Bo and Jacobs, maybe, as far as, like, just, just power, home run, hitting ability. Probably Bo and Jacobs or, 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 or Henry and Drake. But it's been it's going to be a minute because I'm telling y'all, man, like, I don't think people understand just how good uh, Justice Haynes is. So um, I, I just think – back get back on track, though. I think that, like, just – to have those weapons, my, my point is to have have those weapons, man. I think that um that Miro is gonna just blow it out the water this year, y'all. And Ty Simpson, like JB said, Ty Simpson having that comfort blanket. Now the the real 
thing is going to be trying to keep him out of that portal at the spring. Yes. That, that's going to be the number one recruit job, keeping Ty Simpson home, because we can't afford to lose him and Lundigan. You know what I'm saying? So we we we've got the we've got the because I think that Mac might even be ready to go if 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 called upon. But I would love to see Ty Simpson stick around this year to be able to battle it out because I think we all know this is probably gonna be Miro's last year. He'll probably be going off to the league. So, uh, man, I'm it's 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 just so much, y'all, and I'm just so excited, so excited to see. I don't think you're gonna see too much of Miro on Saturday because we got to get those other guys reps like Lonergan. And Matt, because you know, you pretty much know what Miro is going to do. So I think you may see probably one half of Miro, and, and, and that's it. But I think you probably see more of Ty Simpson than anything. Dan James, definitely. But Chris, uh, one thing, Nigel was the second best receiving uh, running back. Man, you, I don't know how you forget about Jameer Gibbs. Yes. Oh, I'm tripping. Oh my god, <laughs> but, yeah, but they're different though. Najee, but yeah. Gibbs was more of a slot guy. Najee could have lined up out wide. And right. been a five star receiver if he don't go on that route, right? You right. know what I'm saying? But Gibbs is just so doggone. I, my bad, I apologize, y'all. <laughs> I, I keep because we only, we only got we only got one year of him, and it's like, yeah. and as our boy Ty likes yeah. to point out, it was under Bob, yeah, yeah. Bob. And, 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 and he was underutilized. So, yeah, I, and, I, and I, and I, I'm <laughs> yeah. I keep forgetting about Gibbs. I, I apologize on that. But again, yeah. we, did, we didn't get we didn't, we didn't get full glimpse of Gibbs either. I don't believe. I'm after seeing what he did in Detroit this year, man, I am living. Wait, exactly. didn't, he, didn't he lead our team in receiving that year? Yes. He, yeah. did. he led in receiving? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah. But, uh, man, yeah. I, yeah. That was Bob's favorite play, the back out of the, the back, slipping the back out of the backfield. <laughs> right. But uh, without a uh, doubt, I, we, we, we're 100% going into this season, you know, much, in a much better situation at the quarterback position. Yes, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. We 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 kind of know a little bit more of what we got. You know, like, not only did did Jalen going into last year, he only had two starts, and that was on the Bill O'Brien. But going in this year, you know, he he he's at, what at uh uh sixteen starts. That's on the Bill O'Brien and Tommy Reese. <laughs> you know, so but you know now now he has a, he has a true quarterback guy, I believe. You know, and uh, you know. I, I'm I'm excited to see what he'll be able to do. You know, I'm expecting big things from him. He definitely had the leadership traits. It's just the, you know, cleaning up a few things, you know, the pre-snap things like that. But, you know, I you know, I got 100% faith in in both of the quarterbacks. You know, Jalen Milro, Ty Simpson. I think both of them, you know, can can be championship quarter caliber quarterbacks. So, you know, I I definitely uh I'm excited to see, you know, let the battle play out, you know, but I, I think it's Jalen's team. It, it always has been, you know. You know. Now we go to the other side of the spectrum and Petty, Lunos, Lanos, which, which one do y'all want to take? Go first. I'll go Lanos. Lanos, give us your take, sir. And no hose bar. Don't don't sugarcoat it. Let it uh, loose. I really do. I really do. So it being a new regime, they wouldn't call it a battle if it wasn't a battle. They just said there was a starter. So as far as I'm concerned, it's still a battle. It's competition. It's an open offense, and they haven't learned it all yet. The coach has already said that. No one has a grasp on the offense. No one has it 100%. So, I mean, yeah, it's A Day coming up on Saturday, but it's going to be a long summer. I don't think this competition is over yet, ladies and gentlemen, at all. I think uh, a lot of people have a, got guys that they think should be that guy. I'm not going to put money on any horse yet because I haven't seen the offense yet. I don't think anybody really has that right yet because this is a brand new offense and they haven't thrown the book at these boys yet like they will. It, they haven't had enough time to put everything in. I think this offense is so it's so diverse and there's so many options. There's a quantity of just different variations of what can happen. And I think it's too early to kind of put your eggs in a basket yet. So I like battles and I like wars. So I'm here for the competition. Patty. Yeah, I, I don't. 
I don't think it ends in the spring. And I man, not to throw rain on the parade, I don't think we're gonna know much. I think it's gonna be so vanilla offensively, you know, it's gonna be hard to take away, but it's gonna be hard to unseat Jalen. I mean, he he's he's coming in as you know, he's he's got the belt, but Man, one of the things, and and Dan talked about the pre-snap stuff. That was something I was always harping on. Well, with the addition of the the, the helmet mics, I think that's going to be a huge benefit for Jalen because you're going to have the coach in your ear right, you know, right before helping you with the reads and the breakdowns and what the defense is doing and whatnot. But, man, yeah, I look, I still got to see – we can hear it all day, but I'll, I'll be honest. I heard some inside sources last year tell me Jalen had made a turn and – fall and spring practice with the intermediate passing game we're like hey man just trust us trust us he's got it now sorry no i didn't he was 50 percent passing and five of you know most of his interceptions came in the mid-range so yeah i still want to see if that gets better it's it's what chris said we're, we're talking about heisman trophies but that's still got to get better i want to see that inner i want to see the progressions i want to be able to see him make the reads and if he does man we're looking at an offense that's like Lou also said, got so many weapons, it's just going to be unbelievably dynamic. But, man, competition breeds greatness. And you you better hope Ty Simpson's pushing his ass, because if not, he's not going to get much better. And, and it, it, you know, come on, man. That's not what Alabama's built on. You better hope Ty Simpson's great, because if Ty Simpson's great and Milrow beats him out, that's just Alabama's that much better. So, you know, and you want to hear that, that, that Lonergan, I hear he, man, I've heard he's making some plays. So, look, yeah, competition ain't over. Let's see it. Chris, uh, Luke go, Chris. But look, I, 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 like, I just want to reiterate what Ty said earlier. I don't think people grasp grasp it. Like, we could be in the meeting room and you have Kalen DeBoer, you have Nick Sheridan, and you have the tight end coach that that groom um, Bailey Zappi. Like. Just you, you just you can just be sitting around all summer just soaking in knowledge and, and like people don't understand having guys that played the position or coached the position, like as real coaches that, that are developers. Because y'all don't understand when Penis was at Indiana, he was a good passer, but he was a he was a nasty little runner. Y'all remember that? But once he got to Washington, man, if you if you watch his pro day, how accurate he was, his timing, his throws. Like he wasn't doing that in Indiana. He was making plays, but he wasn't as polished as he was, man. And 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 if you look, um, at at, at how their 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 offense is, man, and you give a guy like Miro and a guy like Ty Simpson both who can run, you add that element to 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 their arm. <sighs> it, it, it's unfair, man. I'm telling you, it's gonna be unfair. And if I may very quickly add in one thing, um, I, I see Brian saying, can he process fast enough? No doubt is he a, he's athletic. He has all the tools in the world. It doesn't help whenever you send your first year quarterback out there and you're doing nothing to help him as an offensive coordinator. Pre-snap motion helps identify what a defense is in. We ran less pre-snap motion. I mean, Bill O'Brien and Tommy Reese ran less pre-snap motion than I've seen in quite some time. These intermediate short passes, such as screens, we didn't. How many running back screens did we do last year? You can count them on one hand. The offense did nothing from a creative standpoint. And this isn't just me. We can say, oh, well, he couldn't do. You talk to offensive coaches out there. I have quarterback trainers that are on my channel all the time. That's going to be the first thing they tell you. Did you do this? The answer was an overwhelming no. Now we have a creative offense, and that's going to help every quarterback on the roster. That's not just relegated to Jalen Milrow. That creativity helps everything. Lushai, you had your hand up. Did you want to say anything? You know, I was just going to say something that, you know, as Alabama fans, we need to remind ourselves what this place is. This place is where legends are made. Legends. That's what we're looking for. Who's going to become a legend? That's who wins this battle. Me too. And I don't want, I'm not too concerned about the Heisman. At Alabama, all thing I care about is the national championship. Like, I don't, Heisman is cool and all, but I want to win the Natty. Like, I, I, we, it's been too long since we won the Natty. And whoever the quarterback is, you know, I just want to win the national championship. I want Alabama to host the trophy. So I think the competition does help us. And I think, you know, if Miro's the guy, 
lead us to a natty. You know, I know the Heisman is great and all, but like, let's hoist that trophy at the end of the day. Like, let's don't get too caught up in individual awards and lose sight on the most important award is winning that national championship, in my opinion. I think that's what I care about most, more so than anything. Justin. Agreed. Just, I want to hear your take on it, Justin. What you want to hear from me, Chris? About this, this, this topic right here. Quarterback battle heating up. Well, uh, what have you have been hearing, Justin? We'll we'll phrase it like that. That honestly, it's Jalen Milrow's job. Point blank, there is no discussion. And like you guys alluded to earlier, we're not going to have a finished product because everybody is still working on it. And if you're expecting to see a finished product Saturday, you're going to come away very frustrated. So just yeah. going in with the open mind and and the the thought, main thought being, hey, we get some football. We get to see some football right now. And we get to see the our guys do their thing and just get a tiny glimpse of what we're going to see. So, but don't come away expecting midseason form. But it's Jalen's right now. Ty has been doing some great things. He's ma- being less erratic. He's making better decisions. His timing is starting to get there. He he's showing out now. A lot of it's been against the twos as well, twos and threes. So let's don't overanalyze, but the, the small things, the intangibles that he was struggling with last year has gotten better. Dylan Lorigan is just going to be that dude. And if he can stay around long enough, I think he's going to be one of the better quarterbacks we've seen in a while. He just has balls. He's got an arrogance and confidence about him that you like, and he can command an offense. He's showing out right now. Yes, it's against the twos and threes. He's had a little bit of competition against the ones. But he's a guy you want to hang around. He's got a Mac Jones type of potential, possibly even better. But and Mac, he he's been showing some things here and there, made some great off-platform throws. He's just not quite there yet. So let's not try to push him into the fire right away. Let's don't have unrealistic expectations. I've seen comments here and there that he'll take over by midseason. Well. Let's just wait that out, guys. Let's just see how he develops. The thing is, he doesn't have to do anything right away. He can sit back and relax and just kind of grow and be groomed by actual quarterback coaches like Ty has been alluding to, which is something that Alabama hasn't had since uh, Dan Enos, maybe. (laughs) Uh, 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 Steve Sarkeesian. So we we, we finally got some things that are going to help us get better. But right now, the battle is between who's going to be number two, who's going to be number three. Yeah. And from what I'm being told, it's a close battle. You want that. And like Patty said, you also want Ty Simpson heating up and and uh, lighting a fire under Jalen because that only makes Jalen better. You, you got to have a cro- have that uh, competition across the board. But it's, it's Jalen. I like it. So let's transition. Let's do this rapid fire. Justin, stay on. Ah. Surprising. Surprises of the spring. And we're going to say who you think is going to be the biggest surprise coming out of the spring. I'm going to go off the radar and I'm going to say it's going to be Richard Young. JB, rapid fire. You took mine. I was thinking Richard Young. (laughs) I was thinking Richard Young. (laughs) Um, Man, that's a tough one now. I'm going to say one of the young guys in the secondary, man. Uh, I'm going to say Mincy. Mincy. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to say Mincy. Okay. Yeah. Ty, rapid fire, surprise of the spring. Listen, both of y'all have had fantastic, you know, answers. Uh, you know I love Richard Young and Zay Mincy, JB. If you, uh, I have been championing this young man since before he was committed to Bama. I think he is special. Ladies and gentlemen, look out for the name Red Morgan. At the point where a Ooh, freshman comes dang in. It. What did I say about Jalen Milrow? It's 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 one of the clips that did very well. Be undeniable. Red Morgan has been undeniable up to this point, and I can't wait to see what that looks like in the spring game. Honey Badger 2.0. He'll be the red badger. Um, Dan James, rapid fire, surprise. You're on mute. They got him. Yeah, I'm gonna oh, say man. Kelly Cruz. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting big things to him. You know, it, it, it what a year four for him. So, uh, yeah, going into year four, I'm expecting, you know, breakout season for Keanu Coop. Okay. Patty, 
Quit you taking my guys, folks. Patty, you think you're gonna make money on this before we go to Chris? <laughs> nah. <laughs> make money on this? Over under Chris goes one player. Oh hell no. No way he got one in his bag. He's got 12. Um <laughs> Then he's going to have about 12, 12 player comps, and then he's going to go to his uh, Mount Rushmore of those guys that he's comparing them to. Chris. <laughs> he's going to go to the surprise player. Chris. It, it, surprise player of the spring. One player. Err. I, will, I will, Hey, I bet you my guy, who I was going to say, Lucian, I'm going to leave it Lucian. Lucian, I know what we were talking about. We talked about him earlier. But I'm going with the left tackle, Elijah Pritchett. Oh, we're going, up. we're going to show up. We're going to show up this old line this year, fellas. Okay, loose shine. Let 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 Justin and Petty go, so okay. I don't take theirs. I'll make I'll make the, I'll keep the piece. You go off the Justin. I know, okay. I know who Lou going with. Let's go, Justin. Okay, only one guy. One guy. One guy. One guy. So I can't have an offensive defense. Nah, <laughs> that's crazy. Chris used no. to do that. Chris, do you can only have one total. Oh man, you do what you want. What no, that's right. Oh shoot! Just uh, like there's... women tied up in your room. That's one God said. Pick one. Pick one. Okay. All right. Since uh, my, some of mine were already taken, I had a signal for the help. <laughs> again, I, I, again, I ask that the people who are regular cast members provide context to our guests instead of make me look like I'm a Dateline NBC special. <laughs> Uh, context is Justin, uh, in between shows, apparently hops in his white van, throws his white shirt on, and abducts a lady every week. Tosses her ass in the back. Blink okay. twice if you're okay down there, lady. Context. Done. Eat the, eat the cake, anime. Eat the, oh, anyway. Shut up! <laughs> he turned around, shut up! <laughs> okay. I'm going to go with Jeremiah Alexander. Oh! Ooh. Nice. Ooh. Let's go. Patty, rapid fire. You're surprised. Everybody's going to be so surprised to not see a snap hit the ground. We're just going to be loving us some Brock and Meyer. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. I like that one. Loose John, I think I know where you're going. I know what he's going to say. <laughs> you know, I, I, like, I like to see, I like to see just some savagery. So this player... It is an absolute savage. And we haven't mentioned him at all. He's the new guy. L.T. Overton. Oh! Oh, you threw me. What? Okay. He surprised me. I thought you were going with Quay Russo. I, I thought you were going with Quay. No. I like Overton. And, and Quay, we, you, know, you, said, you said surprise. You said yeah. surprise. Okay. Okay. Quay ain't no surprise. Yeah. Okay. Now, L.T. ain't nobody ever seen him in, in that crimson before. That's going to be a surprise for him. Hey, did y'all like mine? Did, did y'all like mine? Yeah, we liked the fact that it was one. You like I was very <laughs> proud of you, Chris. <laughs> you gotta like preaching, man. Come on, he's going. I'm yeah, telling y'all. Right. I like it. I'm going. I'm going to live. This, this is a hard question. Right. Back because, on track. Back on track. We know these guys. There's not many going to surprise us. You know, surprise is one we're not expecting to pop out that we talked about. Yeah. But LT. Listen. Speaking of surprises, uh, we need all the Alabama fans to surprise. Caleb Nabor with at least 100K and Brian Denny um, on Saturday for 8A. Please, if you can't make it, tune in. Uh, it's going to be an exciting time with the new wave in Tuscaloosa. Listen, hit that like, subscribe button. Crimson, the Bama Standard, they're doing a live show from Brian Museum on Friday night. Justin, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, real quick. Oh, matter of fact, the entire Bama Standard Network is going to be at the A Day weekend. So you'll get a chance to see each and every oh, one of us. So y'all definitely check us out around campus. Yes, the, the Bama Standard itself, the show will be at the Bryant Museum, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So you want to come check that out. We'll be previewing A Day. We'll have some legends, LaRon McLean, Blake Sims, and uh, we'll have a, a lot of guys there you want to come check out. So uh, be a part of that. Come support us. Uh, we're going to have uh, JB come around, right? You got you got some stuff going on there, too. Uh, yeah. Listen, we got a whole lot of events we're going to be a part of. Uh, I do want to remind everybody, at the Bright Museum, Saturday, there's going to be a ton of Saban Legends 
including recent legends like Terry on Arnold, Will Reichard, who'll be there signing autographs, 10 to 11, the Bright Museum. You want to come check that out? They're going to be plenty of guys. Yeah, they ain't complete until you run through all those guys. And uh, I'm telling you, it'd be worth all of it. You guys, what a time to be alive, be a Bama fan, plenty to be excited about. And your know, very own Chris James will be participating in the flag football game. So if y'all want to contribute to that, uh, bring some icy hot. He would appreciate that. Hey, Dan, I need one of them stretch bands. Don't be out there looking like I'm getting ready to do something. Chris, don't, Chris, don't, don't forget to put your uh, don't forget to put your jock strap in the washer. You know you have to put that bad boy on in about two years. <laughs> oh yeah, if, if y'all want to meet, you eat no dry on thirty two. <laughs> ain't got it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> What Help was wrong with he froze. What? I think he lost he power. Froze. Oh Lord, look at that face. Mm. Hey, the girl in that room done cut the cut the cord during <laughs> cut his internet. <laughs> hey, they finally got him. They cut the free. power. <laughs> <laughs> they cut his power. Freeze. Uh, <laughs> on the ground down right now, Jackson. Right the the they did. They busted in that uh, Justin's place like uh, they busted in Diddy's. Uh, uh, <laughs> Homeland Security busted looking for P. Diddy. And, and this week on Dateline. All right, guys. Now, apparently, now, apparently, Justin lost power. They got some bad weather coming through Jackson. So it's all yeah, we'll keep going. Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. 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 For sure. So, guys, um, like you said, Bama said that we got a lot of stuff going on. Um, number one place for Bama content. Crimson Dynasty tomorrow, 6 p.m. Central. Dan James is the star of the show. With CC Payne, and there will be no teeth take this week. So, um, listen, every, a lot is going to be going on for a day catch the Bama standard. But at the end of the day, come back and join us at the Fighting Wilson next Tuesday. Tell a friend, get up, get something go on farmersonly.com, get some Auburn fans, all your new genetic su- subscribers. Come in and get in the comments that way we can roast all the Auburn fans. Uh, left and right, but at the end of the day, it's about the final rules. So I'm McAdell. Hit me up on social media, McAdell11. Ty Hayes, how can they find you? Anywhere where they give me a microphone to talk, but you can find me primarily over at Around the Table Sports. Ty Hayes, like Nas, on they say all, all I need is one mic. Um, our special guest, JB, thanks for coming on the show. First and foremost, you did an amazing job. Uh, how can people reach out to you, contact you, Twitter, social media, all that good stuff? You can find me, man, on Twitter, X, Young underscore, ENT underscore, or at Sports Talk JB. Also, my YouTube channel. Make sure everybody watching, subscribe to it, Sports Talking with JB. Um, it's the off season, so I still post Bama content and other sports but if you're a sports fan like me check me out sports talking with jb we gotta get him on an unofficial gm matt oh yeah we're gonna get him we're gonna get him oh yeah we got a lot to talk about unofficial gms all right before we get there dan i know you're gonna be you got a busy weekend buick lesaber juke (laughs) curve um listen how can they find you um within your busy schedule how can they reach out to you oh you can find me on uh twitter x you know at the final whistle dan catch me here every tuesday night uh am i missing something not we're answering well, no, the question we're oh, asking no. the question without interrupting you oh okay okay yeah, yeah but completely interrupting you <laughs> <laughs> you off. all right but uh yeah chris is in this cream catch me every Every Tuesday night, right here on this very channel, right here, the final whistle. You know, I want to thank y'all once again for you know 10,000 subscribers. You know, that, that we can't do it without you guys. You know, we appreciate you, we we love each and every one of you. You know, uh, you can also catch me Wednesday nights, the Crimson Dynasty with CC Payne and Hannah Stevens. You know, another great show. You know, y'all be sure to tune in tomorrow night. Uh, other than that, you know, y'all know the two words. Roll Tide. Chris, how can they contact you? 
Um, you can everybody. I need some more followers on Twitter, man. Dan catch Dan is catching up with me, man. Um, but you can find me on Facebook at Chris K James Senior. Um, on Twitter or X at Coach Chris James. You can find me on Instagram at CKJ32. Uh, I'm trying to get my Snapchat and all that other stuff, TikTok and all that, you know. Um, I'm trying to learn the ropes on, on those, you know, those that's more for the young crowd, but you know, I still um try to do something every now and then on that. But yeah, those are my main ones Facebook, um, Twitter, and uh, Instagram. I kind of just uh lurk on Instagram, just laugh at stuff, but um, yeah, man. If I'm the Facebook bandit, they'll tell you, I'm always on, Lou will tell you, Pity will tell you, oh, Matt, I'm always posting something crazy. Um, so just find me on there. Uh, and um, right here, Tuesday night with the best cast in America, man. Matter of fact, y'all, thank y'all for, for, for getting us the 10k. Like, we can't thank y'all enough without y'all. We wouldn't have this show. Y'all, y'all are the real MVPs. We truly appreciate y'all. And I uh, thank, thank, thank my cast. I can't wait to see you, Lou, in a couple of days. Y'all, Pitt, all the guys, Justin, everybody that can make it. Uh, JB, it, it's going down, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's going down. Um, Lanos. You know, you can find me on X at Rolu21. I'm always on there talking Bama football, giving recruiting updates, team updates, all that good stuff. Everything Bama you're going to want to need to know. This weekend, y'all, like Matt said, we got to pack the stadium. It's a new regime. We got to show – Alabama, we got to show Auburn, we got to show the country that Bama Nation is still here, y'all. Show up. And again, I want to thank everybody for the 10,000 subscribers. Y'all, that's amazing. Let's keep growing the nation. You know what I'm saying? And you can also catch me on Facebook and Instagram at Lucian Graves. Can't wait for A Day. It's going to be a great time. Can't wait. Patty, where can they find you? I know you won't be at any parlors like, um, one head coach that's on Matt, the planes. I don't mean to get preachy like the head coach at Auburn, but I'm going to get a little preachy. You know how your preacher asks you to bring a friend? Hey, Chris Williams, it gets old just making fun of one Auburn fan. I feel like I'm watching your A-Day when making fun of Auburn fans in the message thread with just you being there. So if you could invite a friend so we can have like two or three Auburn fans um, and be more than your oh, A-Day. Not in all of them. I mean, if they get two yeah. or three Auburn fans in here, that's the whole community. Oh, yeah. be like, who's gonna watch the football games? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Who's gonna man the massage parlor for Dixie drinking you? Um, but look, man, tell a friend. It'd be fun to make more fo- fun than uh, fun of more than one of you. But other than that, you can catch me here making fun of Auburn, my one Auburn friend over here, Chris, on Tuesdays. And I guess he was the only person at A Day. I guess he's their only damn fan. Do you roll the? You do all the rolling of the the tumors corner and all that crap. You massage you. You do it all. And we release the eagle, hey. yeah, but yeah, catch the eagle, do the war, all that shit. I, 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 I believe Auburn fans are like Grand Canyon fans, man. They're paid actors because <laughs> <laughs> you, you got to pay somebody to root for Auburn. We oh. know somebody's getting paid under his breeze watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. He's tonight, final whistle. Don't get pissed about nothing but the tide. Yeah, <laughs> it, hey, join us again. This is the final whistle crew. Listen. We like to end on those two words, roll tide. Roll tide. And we don't give a piss about nothing but the time. Nothing but the time. Nothing but the time. Blitz, bama, blitz. Blitz, bama, blitz. Blitz, bama, blitz. Baby got to shut up.